Well, hey there guys. I feel like it's been a while since I talked to you. I know, actually, I'm pretty sure I posted a video earlier uh, last week, but I feel like it's been a couple months since I've been posting consistently. I usually post twice a week and original plans were to be starting to post three times a week after we stopped vlogging on my family's vlogging channel. And a lot of stuff just kind of like happened in one time and I'm gonna update you guys on everything that has been going on at the end of this video, but it actually ties into why I got my blood work checked. So it's, I'm just putting it all in one video here. Um, so normally I think that it's a good idea to get your blood work checked yearly, whether you're vegan or you're not vegan. And so I was going to be getting in last June after about six months of being vegan, I went ahead and had my blood work checked at that point just to make sure like things were going good. Um, and so at my next appointment in this coming June, I was gonna have it done again at my yearly checkup just to make sure everything was fine. However, um, about a month ago, I would say, I started getting like a muscle spasm um, in my chin. And like it was involuntary, just like this spasm that would happen. Um, and so I was like, okay, that's kind of weird. And I knew that it could be tied to a potassium or magnesium deficiency. So I decided to go in early. It had been another six months. So June to now January. Um, well, it had been just over seven months since my last blood work. So I was like, okay, let's get things checked. Make sure I don't have some kind of deficiency going on. And my doctor didn't think that it was going to be a deficiency. I'll get to that at the end of the video. Um, but she didn't think it was going to be that. But she's like, we'll check, make sure everything is fine. So I have all my results here on like my patient chart thing online. Um, so they pulled one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 labs. Um, so they did the CBC uh, with differential platelet, like that's the normal one they do, the comp metab metabolic panel, um, ferritin, iron and TIBC, THST, 4F, T3 free, which is your thyroid, um, vitamin B1, vitamin B12 and folate, vitamin B3, vitamin B6, and vitamin D. So CBC, I'm not gonna go like totally, this is your platelets, your white blood cell count, your red blood cell count. By the way, I have a cold too, so if I sound like congested, that's why. Um, so all mine were fine. My, my white blood cell count was 5.8, so should be between 3.4 and 10.8. My red blood cell count was 4.02, should be between 3.7 and 5.28. Um, my hemoglobin was 12.6, so that should be between 11.1 be between and 15.9. Everything else, I honestly don't know what it means, but everything was normal. Okay, so moving on to the comp metabolic panel. Um, so this, everything was normal as well. I'm gonna get into like actual numbers of stuff because this has numbers that'll be interesting to people. Um, but I had one that was high and that was my alkaline phosphatase level. So this has always been high for me for years, probably as, as far as I can remember since like I was pregnant with um, my oldest, so five years now, um, it has always been high. However, what's interesting to me is, so their normal range is 39 to 117. My number is 122, so it's barely high. Um, according to my old doctors when I was back in Illinois, um, their range was different, and so 122 would have been normal. Um, so she did pull this to look and see um, again if it was high, but we're not doing anything more with it because um, alkaline phosphatase levels are typically linked to liver damage. This is all per what my doctor said. Um, but my liver enzymes are fine. They're not elevated. I did have CMV virus about three years ago. Um, and for the typical person, most people don't even realize that they have it. Um, however, for me with um, a, it's not an autoimmune disorder, but I have a connective tissue disorder called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. It should be classified as an autoimmune disorder. Even my doctor agrees. Um, but my body just, it could not handle it. Um, I ended up getting extremely elevated liver enzymes. Um, my spleen was enlarged. I ended up being admitted to the hospital. My heart rate was between 120s and 130s. So that is the only time in my life that like my liver has been affected in some way, but I'm pretty sure that my alkaline phosphatase levels were reading high before that even. Um, so no doctor's been able to say like why mine are the higher end of this like normal for my last range. Normally it's between the 130s and 140s. Um, so it's not, it's never been like astronomically high, just slightly high. <laughs> um, I'd be interested to know if any of you other zebras out there have higher alkaline phosphatase levels or if anyone knows like everything else is fine. My liver enzymes were normal. My glucose, I did do a fasting blood test. It was 87. It should be between 65 and 99, which is great. Um, I don't know what bun is, but it was 11. Should be between six and 20. Creatine was 0.69. Should be between 0.57 and one. Um, I don't know what most of these mean, but I know what sodium is. My sodium was 139. That should be between 134 and 144, so perfect. My potassium, that was one thing we were worried about, was 4.4, so that was perfect. It should be between 3.5 and 5.2. My chloride, I don't know what that really means, but 96 to 106, mine was 103. 
My calcium was 9, it should be between 8.7 and 10.2, and my protein levels were 6.5, it should be between 6.0 and 8.5. Um, albumin, I don't know what that is, 4.3, it should be between 3.5, 5.5. Okay, so moving on to iron and TIBC panel. Um, so this is like, she pulled four things for iron. This is obviously one of the things that people are very concerned about for vegans. Um, I don't take an iron supplement, it's actually dangerous to take iron supplements if you do not need them. Um, the only thing I do is lots of leafy greens and then also I eat like a lot of spinach, kale, broccoli, asparagus, and then we also cook in cast iron, um, which we got the okay from with our registered dietitian for both us and our kids. So my iron bind cap, I don't know what this means. I've only seen like an overall iron before, but she did like the really in-depth one, so there's four different ones. So iron bind cap, it should be between 250 and 450, mine was 350, so perfect. Um, UIBC should be between 131 and 425, mine was 266. Good um, overall iron, I assume, should be between 27 and 159, mine was 84, so that's good. And iron saturation should be between 15 and 55%, and mine was 24%, so really good. Moving on next, ferritin. It's 15 exactly, it says it should be between 15 and 150. She didn't say anything it being like the very low end. Then next is the thyroid. TSH should be between 0 0.450 and 4.5. Mine was 1.23. Um, your T3 should be between 2.0 and 4.4. Mine was 3.2. Um, T4 should be between 0.82 and 1.11 and mine was 1.26. Okay, my vitamin B1 should be between 66.5 and 200 and it was 153.1. I'm gonna save the B12 for last because that one is interesting. So next is B3 and there's two things that it pulled though. I don't know exactly what that means, but nicotinamide and that should be between 5.2 and 72.1 and mine was 28.6. Nicotinic acid it should be between zero and 5.0 and it just says it's less than five. So B6 is the next one or plasma is what it's referring to as. Um, it should be between two and 32.8. Mine was 22.5 so that looks good. Vitamin D is one that I was extremely low on. This is something that I have been um, low on my entire life though. Like ever since I was a kid, it's been extremely low. Um, it should be between 30 and 100, and mine is at 9.4. So, um, really, really low. <laughs> so this is something, like I said, I've had trouble with forever. I've taken supplementation for, it doesn't do anything. I've taken prescription supplementation, it doesn't do anything. Um, and I have heard that people with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome have a hard time um, taking vitamin D supplements and like actually uh, getting the supplementation from it and maybe from the sun, I don't know. Um, even my test six months ago was, it was 16.3, so it actually dropped quite a bit because it was 16.3 six months ago and now it's 9.4, but we're in the middle of winter, so it makes sense. Um, I spend so much time outside though in the summer and between taking that and I was taking 6,000 IUs of vitamin D um, every day, I didn't do anything. <laughs> so she has me on 50, thousand I use um, it's a lot so we're hoping that if we recheck in two to three months that it finally goes up um, so we will see how that goes but yeah again not related to veganism just something I've struggled with my entire life and from the research that I've seen come out yes honey you want that open from the research that I have seen come out um, it appears to just be related to um, Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome having trouble actually like just getting that vitamin in general. So the last one we are going to go over is B12 and folate. Um, so folate should be, it says greater than three, mine is at 15, so that's really good. And my vitamin B12 should be between 232 and 1245, and mine was 915, which is very high, but good high. So the reason I say this one for last is, so I didn't bring up any of my last, like my results from six months ago because they all were within like a 0 0.2, 0 0.4 difference, like barely any difference. However, my vitamin B12, so let me pull this one up. So my B12 six months ago was 773 and now it is in the 900s. So I just found that really interesting. I know B12 is something that a lot of people are worried about vegans getting, and truth be told, I'm not good at supplementing it. Um, a lot of people think like, yeah, of course it's high because you're supplementing. Like, I have not had my spray supplement 
in a long time. <laughs> I just eat fortified foods. I eat a lot of nutritional yeast, and so that's probably why. They actually also just recently discovered that B12 is not something you can't get on a plant-based diet. They recently discovered that duckweed has it and has it in like significant amounts um, and so now officially it is something you can get on a plant-based diet. Um, you just have to be eating the right things, whether fortified foods, duckweed, or you are taking a supplement. It went from 70, 773 to 915. I just find it like super fascinating because one, I haven't been supplementing these last six months. If anything, six months ago, that's when I was taking my supplement daily. Um, and now that I'm not taking it and I'm just eating fortified foods, um, <laughs> it jumped up almost 200 points. Um, so I know that normally B12 can be a scary thing because um, something you want to stay on top of and people just typically supplement to be safe. Like with my kids, they have their supplement every day. I don't ever like mess around with that. It's just me who's just bad at remembering to reorder my spray. <laughs> um, and so I don't mess around with them, of course. And B12 isn't one you typically want to mess around with because it takes some time for your depletion to happen and so um, and it can cause irreversible effects if you're low in it and truth be told actually a lot of, of meat eaters are also deficient in B12. So that was it for my test. She actually did not end up taking magnesium. I thought that I had seen it on here. However, um, the chin situation is stopped so I assume if it was that that it wouldn't have stopped <laughs> um so all of my tests though that she did take came back normal so for those that decided to skip over that and came right to like what has been going on with our hannah um so all of my blood tests came back fine um except two things which were unrelated to diet veganism just vitamin d which is related to um probably ehlers danlos syndrome i just have a hard time getting it um and then alkaline phosphatase levels um which have always been elevated for me and they were just slightly elevated again per normal she did not think that it was related to that she from the very beginning was like it's probably stress because i told her right off that i was like you know i know that it can be stress related and I have gone back to therapy and I'm going through a lot of like um, processing and therapy right now. And so right off that she was like, I'm sure it has nothing to do with what you're eating. She said that the most common twitch that people will get from like stress is in their eye, but another place they can get it is in their chin. I had also within like the last, I don't know, a couple days of seeing her started clenching my jaw without like choosing to. I would just notice that all of a sudden I was clenching my jaw. And that has also, I've actually stopped doing that the last um, probably a couple days finally. And then like I said, the twi chin, twi chin, twi twi chin twitching or muscle spasm or whatever hasn't happened um, for a week, week and a half too. It definitely all boils down for sure to stress it seems. Um, and that is because um, the update I'm gonna give you guys. Now I'm not gonna go like crazy into detail just cause some of it is very personal. Um, so a couple months ago I started going back to therapy um, to just process and go through um, just like some anxiety that I had coming up. Probably a lot of it is postpartum depression, just kind of like a late onset. Um, and it felt like a lot of it was that. However, we did discover um, that I still had stuff from like PTSD wise from my past that I just hadn't worked through. Um, and so as therapy progressed, I started doing equine therapy and started doing EMDR. If you guys don't know what EMDR is, it's essentially where you have these tappers that vibrate in your hand um, and they go like left, right, left, right. And it kind of like stimulates your brain in this way um, and you reprocess your trauma that way. So. Um, kind of what it does is when, when you get PTSD, your brain is trying to protect you. So it takes the traumatic event and it separates it kind of for like from the emotion. So that's why you'll get like these emotions that pop up due to like triggers or just randomly, even though like that particular thing isn't happening. So you reprocess the trauma and you, your brain refiles like the emotions and the event together so that you're not having or you're having a lot less of like PTSD type side effects, so like nightmares, um, anxiety, panic attacks, things like that. So we only did one EMDR session other than um, when you first start, you um, kind of like create like a safe place where you can like file all of like whatever it is that comes up away if you don't want to process it. Um, so for me, it was like a shipping yard. So if I didn't want to process like, so basically we picked out all the different things that cause stress in my life and I had a shipping container for each of them. So if something came up or something new came up that I didn't want to process, we would put it away in the box for now and then go on to something else. So we did that session and then we did another where um, we decided 
to just start processing. I'll tell you guys because I've talked about it before um, with my emotionally abusive boyfriend that I had in high school. Um, and I had a really hard time getting like out of it. So one of my, my biggest problems is um, I am very much in my head, like very in my head. Um, it's not that I'm not emotional because I'm almost like overly emotional sometimes. Um, but when it comes to like deep emotions like that, I just, I'm very matter of fact, I'm very factual with it. Um, and you'll probably notice in this video where I'm just gonna like be very, doo -doo -doo -doo, like very, just very factual explaining stuff. Um, I don't necessarily let myself get like overly emotional about things. I had a really hard time doing it. And so she was saying like, okay, we have to work more with getting out of your head before we can, you know, do more of EMDR because you, you have to get out of your head and really connect with those emotions in order to um, reprocess things. Amongst all this, I started doing equine therapy, um, which is Liberty Groundwork, um, with a equine therapist, which who's PATH International certified, and my therapist. Um, so this farm is so cool. I love this nonprofit. They're very intentional about making sure that it is a win-win situation for the clients and for the animals, for the horses involved, which obviously is a vegan that's very important to me. So like the animals often are choosing the person that they're working with. Um, there's no, like when you're doing Liberty Groundwork, you're not holding anything. Like there's no halter on them. There's no lead rope. There's nothing. Um, you have to get them to emotionally connect with you and then they help you reprocess it. So it's very much so like the horse has to make the decision to connect with you and you have to like open your mind to let them do that. Um, and so it's just like a very non-forceful, very just keeping in mind like the horse's feelings and what they wanna do as well. Um, so Gracie is the horse that I've been working with. She's a beautiful Mustang um, and she loves, she is born to do this. She's very insistent that she is the one that does Liberty Ground work over the other horses. Um, she loves doing it. And she has helped me immensely. I've been able to get out of my head with the help of her. Um, and so we've realized that like she was very helpful with that. Um, however, so where a lot of this got kind of stressful for me and it was kind of the timing of everything. Some of you know, we announced on our vlog channel that we were stopping vlogging and then I was going to be starting like some kind of vlog type video over here and it never happened. And that's just because of the timing of everything. Um, and so essentially I was working through all that stuff. And so emotions just kind of built up until we realized that I had a repressed memory. If you don't know what a repressed memory is, it's essentially something that happened, usually traumatic, that you have repressed, so you're not like, subconsciously you don't remember it, or I mean consciously you don't remember it, but subconsciously you do, and it does affect you quite a bit. Um, so we figured out that I had some kind of repressed memory between the ages of zero and four years old, and I actually had eventually um, just a glimpse of that pop-up of what had happened, um, and so, it was just, it was a lot. It was a very difficult um, couple weeks. My emotions were just like in full overdrive. I was going from like feeling everything and like barely can function to um, feeling like numb, like I just like had no feeling. Um, and so my therapist was actually like, okay, we're putting a brakes on things. I don't want you going too like far inward. She doesn't want me connecting emotionally at the moment because she just needs me to like kind of reground right now. And I definitely noticed a difference because like I said, throughout that time I started getting the muscle um, like twitches in my chin. I started clenching my jaw a lot. My anxiety got a lot worse. Um, like Ryan had to step up and help a lot with the kids because I just like I couldn't function because when you reprocess a trauma, like I, I only had like a glimpse of what happened pop up, but it completely like just emotionally had a huge effect on me because what my therapist was saying was, when it comes back up, it's kind of like your body is experiencing that all over again, like for real, like as if it happened right now. So even though I don't personally, consciously like know all the details, my subconscious mind does know all the details. And so it was just like a lot of stuff to try to take on. Um, so we've just been working on grounding. Um, like my last equine therapy session was just like all about getting Gracie to just play with me, um, which was actually really hard <laughs> because um, she wanted me to try, because with horses you have to connect emotionally, she wanted me to connect emotionally without it being a negative experience and it was very hard for me to do that. Um, I just, yeah, I have a really hard time connecting emotionally, I guess. Um, so it's stuff that, you know, I'm working on and I'm not gonna go into like super detail about like what it was or what happened, um, but I feel like I owed it to you guys to explain like why I've been MIA because you know, I tell you one thing, and I told you what I was going to be doing, and then all of a sudden, I'm like barely posting, and I just like haven't been here. I don't want you guys like wondering what is going on, um, 
or making assumptions about what is going on like this this is just like real life when you have ptsd it sucks and when you decide to like go back to therapy it's great and in the end it's really like a good thing to do but it is very heart heavy to go through um and you'll go through like your ups and downs of obviously trying to reprocess everything um the last couple days i have been a lot better like i said my um my jaw clenching has stopped my muscle spasms have stopped um i have felt a lot more grounded so to say like she's been giving me a lot of like grounding exercises to do at home be patient with me right now um i'm trying to just work through all this because i want to be the best mom and wife i can be but it's hard to do that when you have already have like ptsd stuff that i know about and now i have this ptsd thing that i didn't know about and now i kind of know about <laughs> she said that i don't have to process it if i don't want to and some people um can choose not to like work through things and they're perfectly fine with that i don't know if i'm that person some people are and that's awesome i don't know if i'm that person that can just choose to ignore it and like not know everything and i'm not trying to be flaky or not post and it's not that i don't like want to be on youtube it wasn't like an excuse just to like disappear forever when we made that it was just timing of everything um and why it kind of seemingly lined up with stopping vlogging then all of a sudden i'm barely posting this channel too I had every intention to start posting more to this channel after that and then it was just like I said crappy timing of everything um, so please just have patience with me I will make my way back to posting regularly here but it's a lot of mental bandwidth it's exhausting you guys have asked if we're moving and we are not moving um, we may we're in the middle right now deciding like are we going to relist this spring or not so we ended up losing our new house um, and it was it was very difficult um, we couldn't sell our house in time and we had just very negligible a very negligible lender we lost our house our house that our dream house that we wanted that was perfect for us in this stage of life and that in and of itself took a huge emotional toll on us like you guys don't even know the half of what happened with that particular situation which we just can't talk about at this moment right after that is when you know i was going back to therapy i was well i was in the middle of that right before like the end of that i started going back to therapy and then we started working through stuff it just like it was it's a domino effect you know like it ha that happened and then reprocessing happened and it was just a lot like it's been just one emotional trial after another um and it just kind of something has to give when it happens and i have to focus inward on myself and i just can't at this i, I like i said i feel better now so we'll see how things go but at the time i just couldn't juggle trying to do the best I could as a mother and as a wife and trying to go through all this emotional stuff and on top of YouTube as well like it was just a lot and so YouTube of course was the thing that took the back seat um but I wanted to explain to you guys still like I'm not like I said I'm not gonna go into like crazy detail but I did feel like I owed you guys an explanation of like why I've been MA um especially because you guys have been so supportive of my family over the years and of me and I really appreciate it and so I don't ever want to feel like I'm leaving you guys hanging or I'm hiding things from you because it's not intentional it's just you know it's personal stuff that's going on and not everything is going to be said on the internet um but I did want to finally open up now that I'm a little more emotionally level-headed um and let you guys know just like what's been going on and why things might just kind of be all over the place over the next six months i'm gonna try really hard but when i'm emotionally ready to because i definitely don't want to like over push myself when i'm already like trying to you know handle a lot of stuff that's everything that's been going on hopefully you guys are all now filled in and you're like oh that makes sense <laughs> i have missed though being just like on youtube regularly my husband and i miss blogging we miss talking with you guys more regularly we miss you guys um i really do i just i need to get past this little part um and so i'm gonna post when i can when i feel up to it and i feel um like i have the emotional bandwidth to do it you bet you're gonna see my face here on youtube or on instagram or whatever but thank you guys for just hanging in there with me and putting up with all of my back and forth i know it happens a lot and unfortunately that's just the life of watching a youtuber that has mental health issues <laughs> we're, we're a little all over the place which i'm sure y'all have already figured out but i will see all of your wonderful faces in my next video why don't you guys let me know, know down below what kind of videos do you want to see from me um i have a bunch of video ideas actually but they're like long term um they'll take like a month to film each probably i know you guys want to see essential oils video that one's going to be probably one of the next three or four videos that go up um will be finally 
essential oils video. Um, but I want to know just from you guys, what minimalism topic videos do you want? Um, are there certain rooms of the house you guys want to see more of? Um, anything, like if there's just like literally anything. I thought about doing right now, there's this thing on YouTube going around, um, like what I spend in a week as a, you know, like a person in LA or whatever. So that'd be interesting to see what I spend is in a week as a minimalist mom. Um, yeah, so I thought that might be interesting. Let me know if that's like something interesting to you guys. But yeah, I think that's gonna be it. I will see you guys in my next video. Sometimes Bye. I